Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to be talking about is managing Power Automate desktop run mode using environment variables. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this is important. So typically organizations will run attended workloads in dev and unattended in prod. Now that isn't an absolute rule, but in general, when you're developing, you're gonna be using an attended so that you can see the output. Once you're happy with it, then it's ready to be promoted to say a production environment. And at that point, you would probably want to flip it to be unattended unless there was a really good reason for it to be an attended and those use cases do exist in prod. But, you know, I'm just speaking in general terms here. Now, the challenge with doing this, this flipping between attended and unattended, is that that flag, what's called run mode, is embedded within our configuration. So when we go ahead and select the drop down for run mode, we typically see attended or unattended and then custom. Now, the problem is if you go ahead, do all your testing in dev or a non production environment, you then promote it over to production, what do you do about this flag? Uh, you would typically need to go ahead and make that configuration change and that could be in production which would likely go against your organization's change management policies so what we can do is we can externalize this configuration this run mode through the use of environment variables and this allows us to go ahead and run our flows in an attended mode in our non-prod or dev environments and then when we deploy to production what we'll be able to do is leverage this environment variable and we'll flip that bit over to be unattended and we don't have to go ahead and modify our configuration and as a result things just run and they run in our desired mode you know and then if you get into a situation where you didn't or you had some you know exceptions you just wouldn't use this environment variable in those particular flows but this would be part of your standard practice that you would employ as, as part of your overall process itself. So note, before you try to reproduce these steps that I'm just gonna show you, I did wanna call something out that's quite important. So you do need to have unattended add-on to test this. Uh, what ends up happening, and this is, you know, just based on my experience with troubleshooting it, this is that there's some sort of save time validation that will look for the existence of attended being configured in the run mode. And then otherwise what ends up happening is a license check takes place. So it's not like it's looking for attended or unattended or other. It looks like it's just looking for attended or other and anything that falls under other, it automatically assumes it's unattended. And as a result, it then goes to check your environment to see if you have specific quota. Now in the environment that I'm gonna be demoing this in, I do have unattended quota, but I did try this in another environment where I don't have unattended quota, and hence this is where I got this particular error message itself. So this is something I'm gonna go ahead and further investigate with the product group, um, but do wanna call this out so you don't sort of go too far down this path and then, hey, wait a minute, this isn't working. Now, if you do have unattended quota, Perfect, just go ahead and just even put one flow, one unattended flow in an environment, then this will go ahead and work. And, and this is irregardless of whether you're planning on using attended or unattended. Um, as I mentioned before, it's just looking for the existence of attended, otherwise it's assuming it's unattended. So even when we have an environment variable token like this, it's going to see that as being unattended, even though at runtime we can inject an intended value in. So just something, to go ahead and think about. So let's jump into a demo and essentially what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you, you know, the how you would use environment variables in this particular scenario and sort of the nuances with environment variables. There's something called a default value, something called a concurrent value. And by manipulating these values, we will go ahead and see what the impact is to our execution. We'll go ahead, we'll run this in both attended We'll run it in unattended mode and also check the behaviors. Now, in terms of, you know, why do we see run mode twice? This, the second instance here is custom. This is mine. We're going to pass this in to our desktop flow as an input variable. We're then simply going to write this out to a log file just to prove that it was attended or it was unattended 
when it was running. So no, we don't have a bug here. There's not a new feature. That is a custom value that I'm gonna go ahead and populate. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at a demo and see this in action. Okay, let's get into our demo here. So I'm gonna start in Power Automate Desktop. This part isn't overly important, but just to sort of show you, just give you visibility in terms of what we're gonna be calling from our Cloudflow. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the current date time. Then we're going to write the current date time plus the run mode into a text file. And so what we've got here is an input variable called run mode. It's currently set to default for attended and we will pass in our own parameters from our cloud flow. So we can go ahead and just run this specific flow and then open up our text file and see that at 2.31 p.m., which is the time in this VM, that the flow is running in attended mode. So let's just close out of all of this and then we'll transition over into our cloud flow. Okay, so now I'm over in the Power Automate Maker Portal. I am in a solution. This solution includes an environment variable. Now, how do I create an environment variable? You just click on new environment variable, provide a display name, a description, and then we need to choose our data type. I chose text, and then this is what I have, the default value and the current value. So let me just show you my config and I'll further explain those settings there. So here we go, I've got mine called run mode. Let's go ahead, let's open it. It is of type text, and then we've got the default value of unattended and the current value of attended. Now, as it says here, when the current value is set, it will override the default value by setting the current value for your environment. So my current value is set to attended, which means if I have a Cloudflow that is using this environment variable in this environment, it will go ahead and inject attended at runtime into my configuration. Now, before I go ahead and move this solution to say a, a subsequent environment, like a prod environment, I would need to remove this value before exporting it so that when it gets imported into that say prod environment, the default value would be unattended and as a result, we would have unattended execution. So that's part one. Uh, I do think it's important to separate your environment variables from your, you know, your applications or your, your, your flows um, if they're going to be used broadly. If you've got something that's very specific to your app, I think it's fine to deploy it with it. But what you don't want to do is start to inject or give your, yourself opportunities to mess up applications because you have to deploy bots with your configuration. So when you do have these, these purely environment variables, probably better to have them in their own solution. Now, the other solution I wanna show you is basically my Cloudflow. So in my, you know, this solution, I just call it execution sample. I've got my Cloudflow that's just called, called desktop flow. I've got a connection reference that, you know, helps me wire up my configuration to a connection. And then I've got the desktop flow that I showed you previously inside of Power Automate Desktop. So inside of this Cloudflow, it's going to be quite simple. We're gonna just have a manually trigger a flow trigger. And then we're going to go ahead and call our Power Automate Desktop Flow. So this is where we've got those environment variables. So there's a, you know, I'm in a shared environment. Other people have created these other environments, but we can see run mode. That's the one that I've gone ahead and created. Now we've got, to, we go ahead and we choose our desktop flow naturally. We've got our run mode. This is typically where you would see that, that's not what I want to do, uh, that drop down of attended versus unattended or custom. So when you click on attended, and then if we go ahead and peek this code, what we're gonna see here is the word attended is essentially sort of hard coded or injected into our config. All we're doing is we're going to use a custom value, and then we can choose the run mode that we want. Now, why do I have this duplicated? As I mentioned before, I wanna pass this value in as an input variable for my desktop flow so that it shows up correctly in our logs. So 
As we saw previously, we've currently got a current value in our environment variable set to attended. Here we're just referencing it. We should be able to go ahead and run this specific Cloudflow and then see a value of attended showing up in our logs, which I will show you after this runs. I'm gonna pause the recording while this runs because this will take probably 20 to 30 seconds to execute. Okay, so we can see that it's completed. And if we go ahead and look at our run history and our outputs, we can see that attended was passed uh, into our desktop flow. Let's just flip over to our VM and just check out our log file there. Okay, we're over at our VM. Let's open up our log file. So 2.36 PM, 2.36 PM, this flow is running in attended mode. So perfect. That is great. Now what we're going to do is the same test in unattended mode. So I am going to log out of this machine and we will then modify our config and then run this again. Okay, so I have logged out of that VM, which will allow us to run it in unattended mode. Let's go ahead, let's modify our environment variable though. And here what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and remove or delete this current value. So that is done. And then based on some prior testing, I found it takes a couple minutes just for these changes to be reflected. So we'll just pause the recording here and then uh, we'll give it a couple minutes and then we'll go ahead and run our flow, our cloud flow. We shouldn't have to make any configuration changes. And what should happen is we should see a successful unattended execution. Okay, so I haven't made any configuration changes to my Cloudflow, everything is exactly the same. Let's go ahead, let's test this out. Once again, I will pause the recording just while this runs, and then we can go ahead and take a look at the output. Okay, so that has completed. Let's take a look at our outputs, and sure enough, we have unattended that are being, that is being passed into our desktop flow, and that's naturally the mode in which it's executed as well. So as we saw here, we can go ahead and modify the behavior of our desktop executions using environment variables. So this is quite handy where you're not having to modify your configuration. As I did mention earlier, you do need to make sure you have at least an unattended entitlement inside of an environment for this to work just based upon that save time validation that does exist. But once that is in place, uh, then you can go ahead and control this through configuration. You could deploy this package to a subsequent environment, then leverage the environment variable and whatever you've got set in that environment would get picked up and naturally executed in that mode. So uh, hopefully this was something new for you, something to think about as you think about scaling your RPA investments in your organization. And that concludes another episode on the channel. Thanks for checking it out. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Um, you're obviously on YouTube, so any likes, subscribes, or comments are obviously welcome. Thanks again for checking out this video, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.